What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are back in Northern California with the E23. And you guessed it, we are finally here prepping for the Overcrest Rally in Utah in just a couple of days. So Kayla and I just flew out last night. First stop at like one in the morning our time, In-N-Out. You know we gotta go to In-N-Out. So we started this morning in Sutton's E24 M6. All right guys, we're back out in California with Sutton. Hi, how's my hair? <laughs> it's fresh. Ah, uh, well, we're starting a video now because we're going for a coffee run, and rather than taking the seven series, which you know is why we're out here, we're, we're gonna car. take. <laughs> Kayla's new car. Yeah. Before you guys get way too out of control, this is Sutton's E24 M6. <laughs> to get coffee in the M6. And this is the car that Sutton's bringing on the rally. We are hammering from Sacramento, California, all the way down to South Utah through Arizona in two shark nose BMWs. How sick. So Sutton's bringing the M6 on the Epsilons and we are bringing the dogleg gearbox E23 on the 1979 died ears, the 16 by eight died ears I had on the 635, we have a full set of ground control coilovers in it, and they honestly ride so much better than I ever, ever would have expected. For a big, heavy car, these coilovers ride so, so well on the 225 50 16s. So what you're gonna see in this episode is us prepping, final prepping for this trip, for this long road ahead, because after the rally in Utah, we are driving 2,000 miles back to Chattanooga, Tennessee in this car. So what we're doing now is we're headed to Harbor Freight, we're gonna fill the trunk up with tools that I didn't fly here with, because I did fly with some, but we're gonna go through a whole checklist of stuff that we think we may need. All right guys, so we're at Harbor Freight, getting some tools, getting some big boys too. Every road trip, I end up taking the oldest floor jack out of the shop and then just leaving it with whatever car I'm leaving wherever I go on the road trip. So I'm down one in the shop, so now that we are driving home, I'm just buying another one. So that'll live in the car, gonna get a jump pack, because. For a while, that alternator wasn't working. It's working now, but just in case we're alone on the cross-country drive home after the rally, we'll have something that'll get us started. Got a tire patch kit in case we need to plug a hole if we run over like a nail or a screw or something on the road. And I do have my Milwaukee uh, battery-powered air compressor. So we've got air, we've got plugs now. It's a German car, so obviously zip ties. It's paper towels. Got some other stuff on a list that we are currently gathering together. All right, fire suppression. Got a few other things. Hopefully we need none of this. All right, next morning we are headed to Sutton Shop. But first we're dropping the M6 off to get an alignment. Had some sweet pour over coffee this morning. It's terrible, they wouldn't drink it. <laughs> I drank it. Uh, I all right, off to the alignment shop. Coffee, 
actual coffee. Sutton basically tried to make pour over with no measurements of any kind, just coffee grinds and water and somewhat drinkable. All right guys, we're back at Morris Motors, just ripped in from Sacramento. Josh's Bay is open and we're going to give it an oil change. So we don't have too much left to do in the car before the rally, but we are gonna do an oil change. Rova sent us some 2050 to put in this thing as well as some extra to take on the road. All right guys, so Rova sent us a whole bunch of 2050 for this car, for the road trip. Oh, look at this. Sent us a bunch of goodies too. All right, so Josh just did an air filter. Sutton had got an air filter for us. You know I run this in all the air-cooled cars, and it's the coolest packaging. And they sent us four tins since they knew we were gonna be driving cross-country. So we'll have one for the oil change, and we'll have a few more to take with us just in case we need oil along the road. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the oil change is done. We got an air filter, a few other things while we had it on Josh's rack. Also cut the giant tip with the 45 degree angle cut off as well. Since if you remember, this car used to be an American market bumpered car and that rear bumper stuck out like another foot. So that tailpipe came all the way out and had a 45 degree angle. So I gave that a quick chop. Still have to clean it up a little bit. Just enough to tuck it in under the Euro bumper. But we're going through the trunk because this thing was filled with parts from the swap and just junk. So we're putting together a box of stuff we don't need, like the automatic shifter base and all that. Stuff we are gonna keep, like all the German market switches. Gonna keep the wheel chalk, and then all of our tools that we got at Harbor Freight. Got the jack, jump pack, extinguisher, socket set, waters, Gatorades, phone holder, gloves, all sorts of random stuff. So we're gonna get all this stuff unboxed and get it all neatly put into the trunk. As you can see, it's a seven series trunk. Should I get in it for size? Go ahead. <laughs> so it can basically fit four Kalas. <laughs> I can totally sleep back. I mean, it is a seven series and there's plenty of room. I mean, comfortable room. That's flat. Zero. Zero. <laughs> There's one thing I've learned about long cross country drives. It's worth spending $100 on a floor jack. It really is. If all you have is a Widowmaker or some crank jack that came in the trunk, even if you have that at all, it's better than nothing. But if you've got the space and the means to buy, Another floor jack. I've learned that you can't have enough floor jacks in the shop. We bought another one of these one and a half ton low pro floor jacks at Harbor Freight. Yeah. Brand spanking new. Keep one in every single car you own. Seriously. Like, it's super important. Even if you see someone else's car start to smoke real bad, you might be able to help. Gloves and hand like shop wipes, essentially. Like gritty, I'm gonna 
work on the car on the side of the road, but then I've got a nice renowned steering wheel so you don't want to get your steering wheel dirty. You got clean hands, side of the road. If I'm missing this in my truck and I'm putting a car on the trailer, I sorely miss these. Something wants me to fly back here in like two months and bag this DeLorean. Leave down in the comments if you think I should do that. Okay, so you guys remember in the last E23 episode, we we're missing the plate frame and ultimately what you could put bump strip between there. It's Euro specific, I couldn't find any. So now we've just got this wide open gap in the uh, bump strip and it's noticeable. So I had Sutton pull some measurements from here while I was back in Tennessee, and I laser cut a strip of 16 inch thick acrylic, right? So it's pliable, so we could like bend it. But the plan is, is to just double side tape that thing in. So it just from a distance and in photos, it just looks like there's bump strip all the way across. This was just a temporary thing for the rally when we're taking photos. All right, well, I was going to laser engrave a shift knob, but didn't have the time. So I laser cut and laser engraved this little acrylic plate with the dogleg gearbox five speed pattern on it. Some of you guys may remember some of the 2002s and 70s era BMWs had a little shift pattern sticker ahead of the shifter right in the center console. So I kind of emulated that. So I just silicone that down so it's removable if I ever have to remove it. All right, so we're final prepping the E23. We hit the road in basically just a few hours, like late, late tonight. One last thing I wanted to christen the car, as it were, with this sweet gift from our friends at Felgentil from Dresden, Germany, when Kayla and I were there last year, and they gave us a whole bunch of gifts from their latest launch, and one of them was a grill badge. They made two grill badges, and they made a 100 of each, and they gave us one of each one. And this here is so nice. And I haven't had anything to put these grill badges on yet. So I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to run a Grand Prix beautiful grill badge from Felgentil on a car that's hitting the Utah desert for a rally. All right, guys, we are just about prepped. Sutton's over here working on the E24, the M6. And his dad is fixing a few cool lines. And the W109, the 6.3, you guys saw this in a previous episode. This thing. Pretty sweet rig. Driving it on to Kentucky after the rally in Utah. Keep your fingers crossed for us on that. M6 is looking great. Tony's gonna be taking this 240Z. Got a really sweet carburetor set up on it. This pretty Z is gonna get a whole lot of dirty out in Utah on the dirt roads. So Tony and Sutton's dad are gonna be ripping out to Salt Lake City, but we're taking the Southern route down to Flagstaff. It's gonna be a wild trip. A lot of crazy people coming, a lot of crazy cars. All right, so just when we think we're ready to hit the road, we aren't. Now, earlier today, we were experiencing a loud clicking noise every time you turn the key on, like real loud, resonate through the shop loud. Turns out it was automatic transmission thing, this cable here. Um, this is our kick down cable that we got rid of. Not sure what this one is, I can't remember. You guys chime in. We thought it was cruise control, but there's no cruise control in the car. But it was this plastic box right here. So we unplugged it from under the dash and got it to quit. But while doing that, we noticed we are missing one of the top bolts for our radiator. Now, while I was gone, Sutton was driving this to and from work and actually lost the radiator, blew the thing up. And so they put this in from the Euro E23 that I was out back. And then the plastic nut cert here stripped out and we lost the bolt. And now we're getting dangerously close to our fan again. Gage is over looking for a larger lag bolt that we can just drive through that plastic cert so we can create new threads driving that thing right through the plastic and hold that thing right to the rad support. All right guys, well we are as prepped 
as I think we can be for this rally. We're hitting the road in just a few hours. It's what, 7 p.m. right now. We're leaving at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning for the haul to Flagstaff, Arizona in the E23. This thing honestly looks like, to me, a totally different car since the last time I saw it. Had some last second issues we had to deal with, but I think we're as ready as we'll ever be for this trip. Well guys, wish us luck on this rally. We've had a few last second quirks with the car, but she seems to be ready to go. Be sure to tune into the next episode, which will be our first long haul to Flagstaff, Arizona and up into Utah. So we're gonna drive down to Arizona tomorrow. Probably drive some Route 66, try to get some scenic shots. I bought six Kodak disposable cameras, so we're gonna be using those on this trip. 1980s car and 1980s photo tech. So I'm really excited about that. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and for all of the support. This is going to be an epic trip and an insane trip all in one. Thank you guys so much for watching and for all of your support. We will see you in the next episode from the desert of Southwest America.